Kayud Mille Falcha, or 100,000 welcomes to you all this fair evening. We'll be hosting the table topics tonight. As you might have noticed, I'm a leprechaun. So I'll be asking you all to go on about all things Irish for at least a minute, at which time you'll see our timer, Maurice, change his background to my favorite Milaki color, green. This means you've reached the minimum time to speak. At 90 seconds, you'll see him change his background to yellow. And finally, at two minutes, you'll change his background to red, at which point you've gone on long enough and ought to be wrapping up your tots, such as they are. Before we get started though, I have a bit of a joke to share with you. Two Irishmen, Patrick and Jamie, had grown up together and were the best of friends. Alas, Jamie grew gravely ill and called his friend to his bedside. Patrick, my dear friend, I have a request for you once I'm gone. Anything, Jamie, anything you wish, tis done, Patrick promises solemnly, tears running down his face. Well, under me bed is a box containing a bottle of the finest whiskey in all of Ireland. Bottle the year I was born, it was. After I die and they plant me into ground, I want you to pour that fine whiskey over me grave so it might soak into me bones and I'll be able to enjoy it for all eternity. Patrick was overcome by the beauty of the plea and in the true Irish spirit of his friend's request, he asked, Oi, tis a fine thing you ask of me and I will pour the whiskey, but might I strain it through my kidneys first? Bit of humor for you. Now, who's my first lucky volunteer? Matthew, thank you for that. Depending on how one celebrates, St. Patrick's is no, not the best day for making memories or at least no ones you can keep. Nonetheless, do you have any favorite memories of the holiday you can share? Strangely enough, I don't have any memories that I can share because I can never remember the day. I go out, I think I wake up in the morning and you know, first thing I do is start by drinking a cup of coffee, but my cup of coffee isn't good enough that day. So I added something special, a little, little bit of whiskey and drink. And then comes around 1030 and go, hmm, I'm thirsty again. Maybe I'll have another cup of coffee, but this time maybe with some Irish cream. And then throughout the day, I just, my memory starts fading and I just start having lots of drinks. I think they're coffee, I think they're beer. I think, I don't know what to think anymore. And then I go to sleep and I wake up. And the next day I come wake up and I think, did I do anything yesterday? I can't remember. Back to you. An excellent tale, Matthew, such as it were. I think you might be a man after my own heart, or at least my liver. <laughs> I like you have your own leap year day every single year. Do I have another lucky volunteer this evening? Greg. Greg, you've caught me by the ear. And I must now grant you a wish. What is your wish? Madam Leprechaun. <laughs> Having gamed for almost 40 years, I have thought many a times what I would actually do with a wish. And every time I see a wish story, I realize that they got it wrong. They wish for the wrong things. They wish for limited things. They waste the wishes. And I know for a fact you can't wish for more wishes. So we're just going to skip that right off the bat. What is the thing that I would wish for? Health for me and my loved ones and a life that would go as long as we wish. 
I have friends who have conditions. I have one friend I just lost last week. And when it all comes down to it, the money, the fame, the nice address, whatever, means nothing. It is the health that we have as we go forward in this life that really helps make it what we want it to be. And so, Madam Leprechaun, that is what I wish from you, is health and long life for myself and those I love. And I give it back to you. Thank you so much, Greg. And I know that you have a big heart. So that is a very generous wish indeed. My next volunteer. Beth, I saw you thinking about it. Beth, you've caught me boy the toe. And I must now curse one of your enemies. Bet you didn't know we could do that. Who shall I curse and how? Madam Table Topics Master and fellow Leprechaun. Fellow Guild members and our most esteemed guests. I personally would curse the one who curses us. And I believe that the one that curses us is the evil one. His name is Satan, otherwise known as Lucifer, otherwise known as the devil. But what curse could you give someone who's already cursed? I would curse him with grace. I don't know if he would be able to accept this. It is something that is so foreign to him. But Blarney, I just don't know if he would ever be able to feel what that means. So a curse can be a blessing. And in many ways, blessings can be curses. Oh, I take that back. No blessing can be a curse. But we shall talk about that another time. Thank you for hearing me out. Thank you very much, Miss Gee. It was a lovely tale and I, I have to say, I'd be a little bit scared to put a curse on the devil. <laughs> now, Miss, oh, hi, Bloom. I did see you had your hand raised. Would you like to give it a go? Sure. Oi, we'll let you borrow me lucky coin that will make you immortal for the day. What will you do for that day? Oh, well, Madam Table Topics Leprechaun, fellow Toastmasters, Guild members, and welcome guests. If I was immortal for a day, what would I do? That's an excellent question. I think of it almost as a superpower. So maybe I'd be the one to run around trying to stop violent crimes. Because <laughs> it would be kind of fun considering my character is a barbarian to run around beating up bad guys and really, okay, the consequence might be prison, but it might not. And certainly death would not be there, nor dismemberment and anything else that would be painful and terrible. So I believe I would actually like to run around beating up the bad guys and the bullies and everything else that's kind of annoying in this world. If I had one day, could I make it to Russia on time to take care of that little problem going on over there with like one well-placed punch? Sort of like Tomahomey and Nakago, right through the gut and straight out the other end. My husband will understand that reference and probably smile. <laughs> so that's what I would do if I could be immortal for the day. Thank you, Madam Table Topics Leprechaun. And thank you, Miss O'High Bloom. I have to say, I will loan it to you for as many days as you think it will take. Another volunteer, perhaps. Let's 
Cynthia, thank you so very much. There's a common misconception that there be a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, but I tell you true, it is not but a myth made up by the English to trick people into trapping fine, upstanding leprechauns like myself. What do you think is actually at the end of the rainbow and why? Okay. I'm not sure, but it makes sense that the English would want to trick people. That's like literally very English. I was just going to say so like it's literally very English considering the history between England and Ireland. But what do I think is at the end of a rainbow? I'm not really sure, but if I had to throw a guess out there, it's whatever somebody wishes kind of like because rainbows are cool. They're super fun to watch in nature like after a good rain. So the English probably because they're you know super into money or at the time they made it up they're super into money so it's like yes there's a pot of gold so let's just take all the gold whatever but what I actually think exists is for anybody who makes it across a giant rainbow assuming you know like you skid down you slide down you could drive down it depending how big the rainbow is I don't know depends on the rainbow it's whatever your desires are so what comes to mind is oh absolutely okay yeah what comes to mind is assuming it's your desires I'm assuming it's not like your most desired thing. Maybe it's like your top five or your top 10. So example, if I don't think if somebody wanted a date, for example, it's like, yo, at the end of the rainbow, there's your dream, you know, there's your dream person that you can either marry, date, whatever your status, whatever you want to be. I don't think that's going to happen, but let's say they wanted a, I don't know, they wanted, I don't want to say more money, but let's say they wanted like health for their family. Then everybody in their family is, you know, healthy bam so that's what i think is at the end of the rainbow whatever your heart desires but not your top desires just like maybe your number two or three back to you an excellent bit of speculation there miss Zhuang. i i do think you might be right although i haven't been to the end of my rainbow in quite a while mr brewer i see you trying to duck behind the bar or maybe you just needed a little bit more whiskey a little liquid courage as you all know, the Irish people love drinking, even more so if there's singing involved. Hoy, give this well-known drinking song a listen. Hey, whiskey, you're the devil, you're leading me astray. Over hills and mountains into America. Your sweetness from the bleacher, you're spunkier than tea. Ah, oh, whiskey, you're my darling, drunk or sober. Of course, there's more options than just whiskey. You might have a pint of Guinness, for example, or two or three. What do you like to drink when down at the pub? And tell us a story about it. What do I like to drink? That is not a fair question because there is nothing that I cannot answer yes to. But my favorite is definitely the water of life. Tis whiskey. It is also a cruel, cruel mistress that leads me to make many, 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 many poor, albeit amusing decisions for the people around me. Some are more costly than others. I was just remembering, not remembering, a going away party I once had. I was at my favorite brewery and someone had brought some whiskey, but no food. And everybody was buying me drinks, but nobody was feeding me. I would gladly take that wretched malt vinegar and fish and chips at this point. I do not remember much, but the next day I had no less than five people tell me that I had tipped different amounts in cash to my favorite bartender. His name was Nate and he had a glorious beard. All totaled with the different amounts in cash, I tipped $280 at my local brewery. Because I am want to go back to the bartender and say, may I close out for brewer? Yes, sir, you've already closed out. Oh, thank you. And I had just been to Vegas. So here you go, here's a 50. 20 minutes later, may I close out for Brewer? Thank you, you've already done so, sir. Oh, well, I like you, Nate. 
here's a hundred. So at my going away party, I lost darn near $300, but I regret not one bit of my generosity. Back to you, Lady Leprechaun. I, I think that story might have been worth the expense. <laughs> and maybe the leprechauns were playing a bit of trick on you. I think Nate might have been a leprechaun. Tis all I have to ask about today. And so I will leave you with this fine Irish blessing. May your heart be warm and happy with the wilt of Irish laughter every day in every way and forever and ever after. Thank you.